The most interesting and the most challenging thing about this new look into Zoom has been just how fast the story has evolved in recent days. When we first spoke to Zoom CEO Eric Yuan, it was becoming one of the most popular tools of this stay at home era. And usage was exploding with you know, millions of new downloads on a daily basis. The night after we spoke to Eric, he actually announced that he was going to be opening up Zoom's tools for all K-12 schools in the US, Japan, and Italy for free. We then spoke to Eric a few days later, and the tool was already being used in 19 more countries, and it was being used in ways that Zoom had never expected. Yoga classes, and weddings, and happy hours, and conferences. And then the question was, how can Zoom cope with all this demand? And, you know, is Zoom going to be benefiting a lot from this very a generous or sort of thoughtful thing that they had done opening it up to all these schools. Then when we spoke to Eric Yuan a third time, just a week later, the story had evolved quite a lot again. You know, over the weekend, the New York Attorney General had sent a letter that the state was going to be looking into security vulnerabilities in Zoom's software. We saw a series of investigative articles from Motherboard, the Vice Tech Outlet, from TechCrunch, and also from Forbes that raised serious questions about Zoom's privacy and security setup. Was Zoom sharing information with Facebook? Was Zoom connecting your LinkedIn profile when you thought you were anonymous on a call and there's your LinkedIn profile right there for everyone to see? So then when we spoke to Eric again, the conversation's tone was very different. You know, he had just apologized in a blog post. And a lot of the fun features that we talked about were now on ice as he had his engineers focus on security and privacy for the next three months. All those you know, meeting related features all on hold. Yesterday when I shared with the team, some engineers so upset, you know, almost almost halfway done, some people are already done. I think guys, no. And this is a different game now. I think we need to re revisit every feature we built before, make sure no data privacy, like attention indication, like when integration with the sales, LinkedIn sales, sales uh, uh, navigator, and anything related to data privacy, I want to raise the bar. I want to tell the world, we take it very, very seriously. I think this time, we really want to build the most secure platform without, without any privacy issues. In a way, Zoom is this you know, fascinating tale of massive, seemingly overnight success and popularity with then the inevitable backlash and concerns that come with it. It's been both you know, fascinating and exhausting to report. And, you know, that's where Forbes loves to be, is on the front line with the source, um, seeing what it's like to go through this moment and hopefully providing a lesson for entrepreneurs or businesses who can see Zoom's historic rise, but also with that primetime spotlight, some of the concerns that come and some of the scrutiny that can come as well. That's what's made this such an interesting project.